I've been testing out the new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Concealer in different ways for what seems like a century now, and I think I have a verdict. There are three things that are clearly different for this concealer than other concealers that I use regularly and love. I'm gonna get into that throughout the video. I'm also going to be sharing with you the shade difference in the shade that I have and the other concealers that I wear regularly. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. By the end of this video, I'm hoping that you're gonna be able to determine if the new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Concealer is worth trying for yourself, no matter what type of under eyes you have. I am 44 years old. My under eye area is very dry and textured, and I am super, super picky about my under eye concealers. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, whether it's your first time here or you've just never hit that subscribe button, I would love it if you would do so before the end of this video if you enjoy videos like these. So let's go ahead and get into the details and the claims and we'll see if it lived up to those for me and if you think it will do so for you. First off, this is $34 for 0.2 ounces of product. There are 22 shades in this concealer. I am in the shade Cedar, which is a little lighter than what I would normally go. It has been very brightening for me, so I'm just gonna say that up front. Cedar is described as light with peach undertones. I usually go for a light medium with either neutral or peachy undertones to counteract the discoloration. I was kind of under duress when I had to pick out my shade because Sephora was getting ready to close and there was a girl there that was helping me and so I think I went a little lighter than what I normally would have if I was picking it out on my own. I do have it on today. I'm able to blend it out just fine. In a little bit when I do the shade swatching for you, I will tell you the shades that I would choose between if I were to get my shade all over again. I do love the packaging. It's nice and sleek, typical hourglass packaging. The doe fit applicator is a nice oval shape. I find that it applies the product as it should. It is that flat oval paddle shape. It's a very liquidy concealer. It's very easy to work with. There is a fragrance to this concealer. I noticed it right away. I don't notice it when it's applied underneath my eyes, but if you are someone who is very sensitive to fragrance, you probably want to know that. The girl that was helping me actually noted that before we even got to the display. It's just got that kind of um, fancy makeup scent, you know, the high-end cosmetic scent that I'm talking about. That is what it smells like. I have sensitive eyes. I have sensitive skin. Nothing about it has bothered me at all. There are some extracts in this product that, you know, it's worth noting. They claim that the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush can Concealer is a full coverage, weightless, and waterproof concealer with microspherical powders. It's supposed to blur and brighten for up to 16 hours of skin perfection and give full natural coverage, and it's supposed to be good for normal, dry, combination, and oily skin. It is free of sulfates, SLS, and SLES, parabens, phthalates, mineral oil, and it contains less than 1% of synthetic fragrances. It's also vegan and cruelty-free. So that fragrance is more than likely due mostly to natural ingredients, but it is still there. It also says it is crease resistant and light reflecting and blends seamlessly into skin. It is supposed to diffuse the look of pores and fine lines. It's highly pigmented to even skin tone and conceal the appearance of dark circles, blemishes, and other imperfections for a smooth, natural, airbrushed finish. Now there is a Vanish Seamless Finish Concealer Brush that is sold separately. I want to say it's like $38. I did not get that brush because they do say that you can use that brush, your finger, or a sponge. And I am not one that normally uses a concealer brush to apply my concealer. I just find it tends to emphasize the texture underneath my eyes. I usually use a sponge and that is to be noted as we go throughout this video. It does say the concentrated formula requires just one to three dots underneath each eye and I know we all have different ideas of the size of a dot so that's also to be noted throughout this video. Okay so those three things that I was talking about I will get into in a second but I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I do agree with the claims that it is very lightweight. Another thing to note is that this sets pretty quickly so I find it best to finish one side and then go 
into the other side. All concealers are not created equally with how quickly they set. Sometimes you can go in and dot, 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 or swipe, swipe, swipe on both sides. This is, in my opinion, not one of those concealers. I feel like on that first day when I applied it, I'm not sure if I have footage of the first day actually, but I can just walk you through it. I do have some footage I'm gonna insert in this video. But the first day I went in and applied it just like I do my normal concealers, which is not a lot. It's just usually a swipe underneath my eyes, a dot on my outer corner and a dot on my inner corner, and it was way too much. So for those of you who really like the concealers I like, the Armani Power Fabric Concealer, Too Faced Sculpting, and you know, Jeffree Star, those types of concealers, you need much less of this. So that is the first thing, is the amount that you need. I have really never used another concealer where I have needed this little of it to do what it needs to do. That said, I do still use my corrector underneath the concealer, which may seem odd when you're talking about a full coverage concealer, but if you have true discoloration, purple, blue, red undertones underneath your eye, you do need to counteract that with something. Otherwise your concealer, no matter what the coverage is, can give you kind of a gray undertone underneath your eyes in certain lights. So I still did use my regular under eye correctors. I will put the two regular ones that I use down in the description box. Those are my two absolute favorites. So that's the first thing to note. You need much, much less of this than you think you will. I use two teeny tiny dots underneath my eye and a teeny tiny dot in the inner corner and a teeny teeny tiny dot in the outer corner. And I blended that out. I'll show the blending in a minute when I talk about my methods of application. And then as I always do, after that was blended out, I went in with a very, I would almost say minuscule dot at my darkest point where I'm a little bit more sunken in right here just to brighten it up a little bit more. And I blended that out. So that is the first major difference than pretty much any other concealer I've tried. I was actually just shocked at how little I needed of this, which is a good thing. The second thing to note that I think is pretty important. Now, maybe not everyone has experienced this. I did try this with a brush. I did try this with a sponge, both damp and dry, and I tried it with my fingers. I really, really did not like it with a brush, and I tried it with several different brushes. I really, really, really did not like it with a sponge which surprised me. It didn't matter if it was damp or dry. I almost always use a sponge for my under eye concealers and I just found that it emphasized my texture and I cannot figure out why. Usually I feel like it makes concealers apply very seamlessly. So the next option was my fingers and it really truly does look beautiful when I use my fingers. Now that's something I do when I apply stick concealers but not so much with most liquid concealers. I guess this does need a little bit of warmth to it. So that is the second thing that is a little bit different about this Hourglass Vanish concealer. So I pretty much always set my under eye area using a damp sponge. I don't bake. I don't let it sit there because that just emphasizes dryness and texture. I just press it in, dust away the excess, and that gives the most natural seamless finish for those of us who do have to set under our eyes and don't want to crease throughout the day. If I do dust powder underneath my eyes and don't press it in, I will crease directly underneath my eyes and I have this one little crease underneath this eye where concealer will settle into and crease during the day. So when I used my normal method of setting, pressing my powder in, dusting away the excess, which normally looks beautiful, it looked very makeup-y. You could really tell that I was wearing makeup, which, you know, if you like that look, that's great. On a normal day, I wear pretty natural looking, moderate natural looking makeup. It just looked pretty heavy. It looked almost like I was wearing more powder than usual underneath my eyes. And later on throughout the day, my under eye area just started looking really dry and crinkly. I was not a fan of this method. I tried this a couple of times. Mm -mm. Nope, did not work. So then I thought I'll try a setting spray because you know, that's worked in the past. I sprayed setting spray on my sponge, lightly pressed it underneath my eye. I didn't really like that either because it looked like my under eye area was 
damp and my face was set with powder like I need to do because my face is oily combination. Although it did lock everything in place and keep me from creasing, I did still get dry and crinkly looking as the day went on. Didn't like that either. So then I tried not setting it. Now, for those of you who don't set your makeup, you may really, really love this not set. Note that it is quite tacky if you don't set it. I know that doesn't bother a lot of people. If you don't touch your under eye area, this shouldn't be a problem. The not setting was not an option for me. It did end up creasing pretty badly on me when I didn't set it, but it did look nice. So if I didn't crease, that would probably be the option I would go with. That or the next one, which was lightly setting it with a brush, which I normally don't do because I normally still crease when I do this. But in this case, I took a natural looking setting powder that I would normally use underneath my eyes, either Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish or Nikia Joy, one of those types of powders. Again, I'll have everything linked down below. And it did keep me crease free for uh, several hours. I was really excited. But then as the day went on, I did crease up a little bit. The concealer kind of gathered in certain places, but I did not get dry and crinkly looking when I lightly dusted with powder and when I didn't set. Another thing to note, I guess there were four things to note, <laughs> is that I'm not typically someone who has issues with my concealer wearing away anywhere and maybe it is because of the way I set it but I did notice by the end of the day I felt like the inner corner of my under eye area not this inner corner but right underneath my eyes the darkness was starting to come through starting to peek through a little bit I know they claim that it's a 16 hour wear that's just not a claim that really stands true for me and I have seen a couple of other reviews where that has happened to them and I've actually talked to some of my friends that have tried this and they said the same thing. So I'm not sure what is up with that or why that's happening, but it happened with all four methods of setting. And I did each of those several times. So I'm gonna show you really quickly the shades. I almost forgot to do that. Like I said earlier, this shade is a little bit lighter than what I should have gone. So you can see what the shade Cedar looks like against the Armani Power Fabric the Too Faced Sculpting Concealer, and the Jeffree Star Concealer, the shades I wear in all of those. Now the Jeffree Star is pretty light. It's more of a brightening concealer. The Armani and the Too Faced are the two that I wear most often. The Too Faced is one I can wear on my face and under my eyes. The Armani, I would say, is closest to the perfect shade that I should wear. If I had to go pick again and get my perfect shade, I would probably choose between Pearl, which is described as light medium with peach undertones, and Sapia light medium with neutral undertones. Now, my face does have yellow undertones, but I like to counteract what's going on underneath my eyes and blend it into my face. It just works best for me. But the cedar doesn't look bad. It doesn't look too bright, I don't think. My skin is light medium, yellow undertones. If you think you're close to me, I have both my foundation and my concealer shade match list on my blog linked in the description box. There seems to be some good and some not so good with this concealer. So how do I feel about it? Who do I think would like this concealer? Who do I think maybe wouldn't like this? If you are not super dry and can go without setting your under eye area or just lightly dusting powder and you won't crease, I think you might really like this. This feels very, very lightweight. Even on the day when I applied it pretty heavily underneath the eyes, it just felt really lightweight. It brightens, it does make the under eye look really, really smooth. And I would say if you're not having a super long day where you're you know, gonna get that wear at the inner corner. I think you would really like this. Okay, so how do I feel about this for me? This concealer is a little bit too finicky for me for it to replace my favorite concealers, but I do not hate it. It really does look beautiful when I apply it the way I know to apply it now with that small, small amount and when I lightly dust it with a powder. However, I sometimes don't know how long my days are and I don't like to wear it for super long days, but if I have just kind of a short day, I really do like it. It's pretty. I just wish it was the type of concealer that I could set the way I normally do because I would like for it to be a little bit more bulletproof for me for any occasion and it's just not. 
but I, I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just kind of in between there. I feel like this is one where I should just be like, you know, no, this is not for me just because it's not one that I'm going to reach for day in and day out. But there's something about it that I, I do like. So this was, this is a little bit hard for me. I do think that there are a lot of people that this concealer can work for. This wasn't as cut and dry as I thought it was gonna be. I thought I was really, really gonna love it or really, really gonna hate it. Because overall, I love most of Hourglass's products, but there's a few that I've had some issues with. So this is just one of them that kind of falls in, in the middle somewhere. I have entire playlists on the under eye area on concealers. I will have that link for you. I'll have some links for playlists down in the description box as well. You can watch those. They've helped a lot of people out. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you're going to be trying this concealer or if you already have it, how you feel about it. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button, become part of the family. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.